This is Ina. Hi. She is a front-end web developer at JetBrains. She is very experienced. Life for Ina is very good. She has great tools at her disposal, excellent well-documented web and browser standards she can rely on, frameworks and libraries that take care of pesky boilerplate, and modern JavaScript language features like let, const, arrow functions, and async await. Recently, Ina had fun reverting the WebStorm webpage to its former 2010 glory. She laughed. But then, she stopped. Because she realized that for some people, this was a modern web page built on the best usability practices of the time. You see, the internet has come a long way since 2010, and what was a very modern site back then is now maybe seen as a nostalgic relic of a darker time of the internet. Maybe a perfect time. But maybe a traumatic time. But why was it bad? What did developers at this time really go through? Imagine a page without let, without const, and without fetch, with no HTML5 canvas element and CSS free. Well, it is only a beautiful stylized dream. But you have var, an XML HTTP request, and document.write, the classics that some might say still power the web to this day. Let's start with layout and structure. Modern Ina has the absolute pleasure of building layouts with Flexbox and CSS Grid. Ina in the olden days though, would have had to table her expectations. It is a table inside a table with a table inside it. Today, Ina writes clean CSS. She uses variables, calc, media queries, and pseudo classes. But in 2010, it was inline styles everywhere. And let's not even go into PNG transparency and Internet Explorer 6. Modern JavaScript is sleek. Modules, async await, fetch, classes, and destructuring. In the old web, it was all var. No block scoping, no modules, just scripts jammed into the head element and fingers crossed. And if you wanted to make a HTTP request. Please stop. Sorry, Ina. There is no stopping. Loading images on your browser would have you waiting minutes as line by line it rendered into a beautiful pixelated masterpiece. If you refresh the page, it all started again. Browser technology has come a long way though. Today, Ina codes once and it works everywhere. In the olden times, Ina codes once and it breaks everywhere. This was the golden age of browser wars. Why that deep? eight pixels lower in Internet Explorer. No one knows. The internet today is fast. You may not think so, but relative to 15 years ago, it's really, really fast. The old web, mm, not so much. 1.9 megabit per second is so fast. Some say this is why millennials are so patient and awesome, because this was their norm in their formative teenage years. So, what has Ina learned today? Ina learned to appreciate everything she has, the standards, the tools, the community, and the fact that blink element is gone forever. But she also saw the ingenuity of early web developers, building cool things with primitive tools. The web may have started rough, but it's grown with us. And thanks to developers like Ina, it's more powerful, inclusive, and beautiful than ever before. Long live the modern web, and long live the front-end devs who've survived the old one. But the story doesn't end here. Meet Xenia. They've just started a new job as a developer. Their first framework was born after 2015. Their first console.log was recorded in 4K. Hey Juni, can you generate the form logic and validation schema for this checkout page? Xenia does not struggle with XML HTTP request. Xenia does not fear CSS specificity. Xenia has an AI pair programmer and no idea what a frame element is. They didn't even write a single for loop. No, they didn't, but that's okay. The web is built on progress, on code that was once painful so it could become beautiful. So whether you're a hardened dev who wrestled with Internet Explorer 6, 
or someone who just asked an AI to build your navbar. You're part of this story now.